Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Monday, August 20th, 2012, and I'm Darko. I'm going to cover the economy in this first video along with some other stuff. Uh, interesting news, definitely. Uh, Jim Rogers, it's going to get really bad after the next election. It says in a riveting new interview on CNBC, the legendary investor Jim Rogers has warned Americans to prepare for a financial Armageddon, which we've heard this many times before. Um, I have my doubts of it, but he says uh, he fully expects the economy to implode after the U.S. election. So he says here, Roger has been an outspoken critic of the Fed's policies of quantitative easing, saying the world is drowning in too much debt. He puts the blame squarely on the U.S. and European governments for abusing their license to print money. In the U.S. alone, the national debt has surged to nearly $16 trillion. That's more than five, or sorry, $50,000 for every American man, woman, and child. They need to stop spending money they don't have, Roger said. The solution to too much debt is not more debt. What would make me very excited is if a few people, i.e. the government, went bankrupt, Roger added. It's going to be bad after the next election, he says. In a newly released documentary that went viral last month, a team of influential economic experts say they have discovered a frightening pattern they believe points to a massive economic catas catastrophe unlike anything ever seen in the history of the world. So here's a good website, um, shithitthefanplan.com. Report says Soros unloads all investments in major financial stocks, invests over $130 million in gold. So in a harbinger of what may be coming our way in fall of 2012, billionaire financier George Soros has sold all of his equity positions in major financial stocks according to a 13F report filed with the Security Exchange Commission for the quarter ending June 30th, 2012. When a major global player with direct ties to the White House, Wall Street, and the banking system starts off loading stocks and starts stacking gold, it suggests a very serious market move is set to happen. While often lambasted for his calls to centralize global banking, increased government intervention in the economy and his support of what he has called an emergence of the New World Order, if there's anyone with an inside track of where things are headed, next it's Soros. And another individual, Lord Rothschild, takes 130 million bet against the euro so Rothschild has taken a near 130 million uh, bet against the euro as fears continue to grow the single currency will break up so many of you already know the history of him and uh, the war with uh, France and England and how he profited off of it so don't need to go into it you can go look it up 10 most profitable US companies paid 9% in federal income taxes largest corporations in the US consisting of oil retail, retail banking and technology giants paid an average of only 9% of their earnings in income taxes to the IRS last year so according to tax code companies are supposed to pay 35% income tax so yeah I just recently I was in a near uh, in a town and it was like a beautiful day out uh, they weren't spraying as much which is nice and I saw it was a Saturday, you know, so a lot of people were out doing their um, uh, their garage sales. And I noticed, you know, a cop, uh, one of them, when I was leaving the town, you know, I seen a cop car right on the main route leaving town. I'm like, wow, okay, it's kind of a weird place to park. But then I noticed there was a garage sale there. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's that makes sense. You know, I've had, um, you know, uh, my last time I got pulled over, like I mentioned, it was in that town. But there's something about that town. Uh, they have a street called Pike Street. So, you know, i.e. Uh, Albert Pike, I don't know. But... Uh, you know, there's nothing worse than, than these people that are, like, middle, lower class, right? Um, they're not poor, poor. They're not um, middle, upper class. They're not upper class. And they're trying to make ends meet. And so these little garage sales actually help them pay their bills. And so these asshole cops come, and they fuck with them for codes and code violations and stuff like that. And it's, and it's so ridiculous uh, because... Uh, you know, we see how the system works. It, you know, if you are lower middle class, you pay into all of this system, and you don't really get much back. Um, you know, it's made for the poor and it's made for the rich, for the corporations who don't pay anything into it. So, I mean, they really do get uh, the short end of the stick when it comes to that. So we were uh, we were just talking about George Soros and the printing of money. Chance of Fed printing more money jumps to sixty percent. Uh, so it says here, 60% chance to launch a third round of money printing. So an individual that um, is a viewer of GGN leaves comments once in a while, uh, Chota Boy 66 and uh, he's got a pretty insightful um, on t uh, take on uh, the Federal Reserve System, 
on money printing and what it is and the laundering of money. So I'll go ahead and read it and then we'll uh, continue here. Money is siphoned off by every bank on the face of this planet who steals and launders the money we create by issuing a promissory note before any book entry banks put up or give up basically jack of their own. Uh, the Federal Reserve can't publish any money unless one of us issues a promissory note first when we allegedly borrow money. All local banks launder the money via the Federal Reserve System, the central bank, and the same money is loaned back as a irreversible multiplication of national debt which keeps the cycles of consolidation going until we lose the lot. There is no loan, but there is a debt to pay the true creditor who actually gives up property and retires that money. However, we have banks who pretend to loan us money when they're really loaning us our own contracts back to us and charging us interest for the privilege of being robbed, interest that causes an irreversible multiplication of debt. My website is ggnonline.com, and on YouTube, my channels are ddarko2012 and 2013. I have a poll up here. Do you believe the recent media attention on the feminist riots, uh, the ban riot uh, jail sentence and the protests of the Russian embassy in London was a Western strategy to demonize and destabilize Russia? So far, 61% are saying yes, followed by 23% saying no, and 15% saying maybe. So you can put your email address to follow us there. And also, uh, I'd like to thank the people who have donated to me recently. It's very much appreciated. So some signs of the times, cows eating candy during the drought. So ranchers have struggled with skyrocketing corn prices because the drought has made feeding their livestock very expensive, but one rancher has turned to a very sweet solution. So it goes on here, so just to be able to survive, we have to look for other sources of nutrition so they're no longer feeding off corn. And they began to buy second-hand candy. And it's too bad um, because some migrant workers that were living next near me uh, they left just recently and they gave me a bunch of food and one of them was these uh, nice sirloin steaks and I don't have money for that stuff so it was really it's a nice treat and uh, I noticed on there it said no additives or anything and it said uh, grain fed I thought that was kind of interesting grain fed uh, beef and it reminds me of a story when I was uh, younger my mom told me something about out in Montana and Dakotas when she was out there that they were all big on the Midwest beef because it had corn fed and she was like well no you guys have it better because you have the grain beef so says here, jobless Italian dies after self setting himself on fire or self-immolating. Unemployed Italian has uh, succumbed to injuries he suffered last week after setting himself on fire outside Parliament in an underscoring the growing joblessness in Europe. So he suffered 85% burns. Man, dude. Uh, you know, at, at that point, 85%, you wish you could just punch out, you know. But uh, who knows, maybe they, they came there and fire extinguished them. You know, to keep him alive so they can keep taxing him. You know, that's that's what I love about the authorities, right? Because they don't give a shit about your health. But uh, you can sit there and fire at the cops and they will shoot you in the head and then they'll try to revive you for the sole fact that you are a tax debt slave. And they want to maintain that. It sounds very cold, but that is the cold hard truth. Binge drinking college kids are happier, says a study. They're finding drinking is associated with social status. It says that drinking in college may be more motivated by social factors than by an actual desire to get smashed, so social status. Miami, Ohio University ranked in top 10 party schools in the United States. So this is at the same time where Social Security Administration is now uh, docking uh, people's Social Security benefits, like 50, 60-year-olds or 60-year-olds, whatever, uh, because of college tuition uh, payments that they haven't paid. So. As this guy gives a Nazi salute, that's very, very interesting. But it's no big deal because it is a big business. I remember I was like having to think when I was like, you know, 11 years old, 12 years old. I started to realize, okay, I got to start to think what college I'm going to go to, what I'm going to do. And I just, you know, it's just it's so forced on you. Talk about social status. Everybody in my high school knew by the time they were like sophomores, freshmen, where are they going to go? So where did I go? I went to the Marine Corps. <laughs> then I went to college. And then, and then I realized that both were, uh, I don't want to say a joke, you know what I mean? Uh, but, you know, I mean, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And speaking of universities, uh, you know, you can't really defend yourself on most of them. University of Colorado to allow guns at off-campus housing. So they're going to allow students with concealed carry weapons permits to keep guns at some off-campus housing, but students cannot have them in their dormitories. So it's not going to really help then we're on campus. When some individual lone gunman, quote, lone gunman, um, gets uh, released out of the back door of the local um, psychiatrist's office, pumped full of drugs, 
and goes on a shooting rampage, uh, you won't be able to defend yourself. You just have to sit there and be a statistic. But don't worry. The authorities will be there with all of the money that was spent and all the drills and all the preparations for a, for a lone shooter. They're going to make sure that uh, they're going to be there for you when you get shot in the, in the back and the head, that they're going to be able to revive you so that you can keep paying your college tuition and then you can go on to be a good tax slave in the job market. House bill would allow students to carry guns on campus. This is University of Kansas. Uh, wants to take his Glock 19 to class, so it goes on here. And it says that Kansas is one of the 49 states to allow concealed carry of handguns, but it's still pro uh, prohibited on college campuses. So the House is going to consider a bill which would allow concealed carry permit holders to take guns into government buildings unless they have metal detectors. And of course, Texas is considering the same thing. Uh, they've already in the Senate approved college concealed carry bill. So deputies, women 87, scares off burglars with a 9mm gun. Two burglars were scared off by an 87-year-old woman armed with a 9mm handgun Thursday morning, deputies said. This reminds me... Again, when I was younger in my old neighborhood in South Chicago, which is mostly like Polish and Irish, those old ladies, you didn't fuck with them. They'd come out with a shotgun, but now this is all different. Those, that, that generation, those old generations are gone, and God forbid if you are a good slave, a good tax slave, and you pay your taxes, and you have a gun to try to defend yourself in the wonderful, peaceful city of Chicago. Educators or re-educators or indoctrinators or brainwashers or programmers, whatever you want to call them. Educators say Friday they're going to start school year with an easier transition. Now, I, I only know about this because I looked around in my environment and noticed that all the school buses were going around. And I had a feeling, you know, school's probably starting up again. Well, it did. And guess what day it started on? It started on Friday. Hmm. And the first thing I thought of was, why would they do that? Why would they... Why would they? Why would they start school on Friday? I'm like, that's the same thing that they do to people before they shit can them, right? So they don't go postal and start shooting everybody up or do anything rash or try to jump off the top of the building because that's the end of them. Well, that's how they see it and kill themselves, right? So this is what the this is what the schools are doing is they is they train the next generation of tax slaves. They start they start school on Friday, right? So they can go one day and be like, oh, that wasn't too bad. So entering his first year as principal and uh, assistant principal for four years, this Mr. Moyer says, then they come back on Monday and they're ready to roll. So there you go. And driving in another area, uh, this North Ridge is basically near Amish towns and stuff like that. I, I couldn't help but notice that this thing looked like a prison. And then I realized actually that it was a high school. So go figure, right? It's actually a high school. It's got the nice Masonic uh, triangles and that like that. Um, but very... Um, but very, very creepy. I mean, the thing looked like a damn prison to me. But it's not its not the first time I've seen other high schools because they're real big on these mega schools, I've noticed. Wherever, you know, wherever I go or wherever I see, I hear about these big schools that are being, uh, these schools that are being shut down for efficiency. Oh, they're not efficient. They're not efficient. You know what I mean? And they consolidate all these townships into these huge mega schools and they look like prisons. And then when you have big mega schools, what do you need? Oh, you guessed it. Security. You're going to need security. But uh, also, what, they had these. Northridge High School gives laptops to every student. So I noticed in looking at this that Northridge was given real high ratings, you know, eight, nine, nine out of ten. It was a great school. Well, because they're cutting edge, because they're giving these people laptops to take home with little cameras they are going to spy on them while they're at home, right? That's what they do. I mean, it's what Penn, they did in Pennsylvania. So palm scanning causing concern among Moss Bluff Elementary Schools. It says here a local elementary school is trying to implement a new program in their cafeteria, but it says here that the uh, palm vein scanner is being met with much opposition from their parents. So the parents are basically what the overseers are, kind of the babysitters, because if your children are owned by the state, then that would make you kind of the babysitters. So like in South Park, you'd be like, rabble, 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 right? That's pretty much it. I was mad. I was very, very mad. Okay, we'll do something about it. So here we go. What's the reason for it? Oh, it's going to move the future tax slaves through the lunch line at a faster rate. It's going to improve efficiency. We are so large. We're such a big uh, mega school. We make it more efficient, more accurate. See, but they said, oh, they give them an option. See, they probably didn't tell them this right off the bat that they have an opt-out. But then when they made a big stink about it, oh, oh, don't, what do you make a big deal out of it? You can opt out, even though we didn't tell you about it. They're select motherfuckers, man. And the same, and the same day on Friday when I realized the whole thing about the send them back on Friday, I noticed this. Someone holding their, had their children, child on a leash. I couldn't believe it. It was like a harness or something like that. 
They actually sell them here called gold bugs, a monkey child safety harness. This is what they think of us. And the mothers walk around with them. I, I swear to God, she was like tugging on it like it was a little, like a little uh, dog. So they're not your, they're not your children. They're your pets.